Hey guys, it's Postbox Pat, and welcome back to a brand new Fortnite Battle Royale video. And today I'm going to be talking about everything we've come to expect to appear in tomorrow's update. So we've got a lot of information and a lot of stuff going around. I know a lot of people out there are very disappointed that the update has taken a little bit longer than usual to drop. But don't worry guys, it's popping tomorrow. You can expect all the changes on my channel straight away. So get ready for them. Hit that notification bell. Let's try and hit 400,000 subscribers as soon as possible. Hit that notification bell. Hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Much love and respect to everybody out there supporting me. Also, if you guys want to go and enter in my support to create a code, you can with code PostbotsPat. Remember to tweet me at PostbotsPat because you can see these people getting a shout out right now. And you could actually get a shout out in tomorrow's Map change video so if you want to gain a shout out enter in my code postbox pat tweet me at postbox pat and much love and respect to everybody who is supporting the channel we are so close to 4500 supporters so let's try and get there so don't forget to go and enter in code postbox pat into your item shop all right guys so where are we at with this we've got a lot of stuff going on in the map and there's a lot of stuff i want to talk about in today's video so the first thing i want to just mention is the actual time of the update so you can see here fortnite have tweeted out right on screen right now it says the version 9.2 update releases tomorrow june 9th downtime begins at 4 a.m et 8 o'clock utc which is uk time so we can roughly expect the update to go live around 10 11 o'clock ish uk time so about three to make probably about three hours after two hours somewhere between that region and also it says here real money purchases will be unavailable one hour before downtime begins while we perform an additional maintenance so that obviously is something that fortnite are fixing some sort of problem on their end or something i'm not 100 sure what that is so you'll have to roughly wait about five hours until you can purchase something, but that's not the end of the world. Let's jump into this and go over what other things we can expect. So the first thing I want to point out at is this on screen right now, and this is the Fort Byte stuff. This is something I've used in the thumbnail and something which I wanted to discuss because there's something pretty interesting. At the bottom right here, you can see if I zoom in, it now has unlocked the eye slash head of the monster that we can expect to be underneath Polar Peak. So what we've come to expect and predict from this one is that because the update is late most of the fortnite devs probably expected the actual monster oh it flashed then the actual monster to appear from basically this kind of update but because the fortnite devs are a little bit late i can expect that the head's probably going to be here tomorrow you're going to be able to see more of the head that'll probably be it really and that is why in this picture here that you can see on screen right now again the fortnite picture that's why they've revealed this one today obviously it's because the update was meant to come out today or at least yesterday but it didn't happen so they've kind of leaked it a little bit early but yes that looks like the head of the monster i can assume it probably is let me know down in the comment section if you don't think it is the eye does look pretty similar not 100 percent but it does look kind of similar obviously it's pink and black the textures you use on the fort bite reveals and stuff other than that on the fort bite type thing there isn't really that much if you take a look at the entire image right now there isn't really much that's been revealed i know there are a few leaks and stuff but they're not very good really they're very rough and they don't really show exactly what we want to see but yeah, you can look at the entire image we can see the cube there at the top we can also see the eye again at the bottom left maybe this monster has something to do with what is underneath polar peak that's coming out which has been revealed today we can see the little pink square about around it and also you can see up there on the top left we've also got tilted towers as well being destroyed the other pictures haven't really re been revealed that well i know there's a few people who have attempted to fill it out with leaked squares and stuff but they've just put them in the wrong positions and it just doesn't look very good so this is really what we've got so far it's clearly and i haven't really talked about this so this is the first time i'm talking about it on the channel but it's clearly jonesy in there or the bunker jonesy and he's drawing on the walls potentially what happened maybe something to do with these eyes and monsters which we've not seen yet this could also link into the new storm kind of consumable or grenade whatever it is coming tomorrow which i think it may have something to do with the husks but i can't remember exactly if it will uh, i don't know i can't guarantee it so i did say it would but i'm starting to think maybe it delays the storm and increases the storm speed or creates maybe a force field where you can stand in during the storm i, f I don't know exactly it's such a weird item it's hard to predict what it's going to be because i feel like if you can control the storm that's too op if you can kind of predict where the storm's going to be that's too op if you can kind of last in the storm forever again that's too op and it says you can consume stuff and stuff like that which makes it really overpowered so i just thought it might have been like some tame it so that's what it said tame so i don't know 
how that's going to work. That's why I thought it could have been something to do with the actual husks themselves or the fiends as they're called in Battle Royale. So potentially that's why I thought it was to do with them. But, you know, I can't guarantee everything that I say every single time. Other than that, we can expect to be a lot of bug fixes coming in this update. I'll pop a few on screen for you guys right now for those wondering. I'm not going to read through them all just because there are so many bug fixes. These are some of the ones that are well known in the community. There's a few skin glitches as well. I know the brand new skin. Apparently the battling doesn't touch the skin. So that'll be fixed. And there's a lot of other bug fixes as well. I guess bug fixes aren't really the major interest and a lot of people aren't really interested in expecting them and knowing about them which are coming tomorrow. So what else can we expect in tomorrow's update? Well for those who usually log in every single week and understand Fortnite updates, this is actually an update which you physically have to download rather than a content update which they just apply to their servers. So that means leaks and a lot more information regarding skins which are upcoming, obviously regarding wraps which are upcoming and also regarding events. So it's going to give us an inside look into what's going to happen at Polar Pete. But just to confirm, I don't think anything's going to happen this week or next week at Polar Pete because we have the E3 event coming up as well. I don't think Fortnite would have an event take place during the Pro-Am or any of their events which they're hosting at E3. So, you know, it's an interesting concept and I'm pretty excited to see how Fortnite are going to deal with all this sort of stuff. Hopefully, they do announce something big at E3 this year, and I'm hoping for them to announce a major change to the game, maybe a new entire game mode. Obviously, we have Creative Saved World and Battle Royale. I was hoping this last year, but it didn't get announced, or maybe even a brand new map, a different world, a different universe, a different storyline, which is different to the Battle Royale storyline, which we have in the first world, Island 1, maybe Island 2 might have an entire different storyline and entire different weapons, which I think would be awesome, but still using the same skins and concepts. So we'd have to see if Fortnite would introduce a brand new game at E3. Maybe it's too early for them. Maybe they're waiting one more year before they do it, but we can definitely expect Fortnite to introduce some sort of concept in the future regarding game or change to the actual universe maybe even a brand new lt it's not even ltm brand new game mode entirely i feel like that would be such a good option for fortnite and i definitely think they'd love to do something like that in the future so hopefully we can expect fortnite to do something like that. we just don't know if it's going to happen or not we'll have to just wait and see if fortnite will introduce something big at e3 i think this year is probably not going to be the year it'll probably be when Fortnite slowly starts to die off a little bit, they'll probably introduce a very, very big change, which will bring back a lot of players. A little bit, a little bit like we can see with the Minecraft Earth type thing, which is currently taking place. I think that's what it's called, or the Minecraft World. It's like a mobile game, but I guess Fortnite wouldn't do something like that, but they could introduce so much into the world. And because obviously we have saved the world, which was kind of like the building blocks for the entire game, without saved the world, Battle Royale would never exist and neither would creative. So obviously they could just bring out an entire new LTM slash game mode, which would just be insane, which people would love. Maybe an adventure type or maybe some sort of storyline, more based like a campaign or even, you know, you just look at other games and think maybe an MMO or you know there's so many different ones strategy game just like multiplayer roaming free roam whatever you want to call it there's so many different things they could do with fortnite we just have to see what they're going to announce at e3 i know that's gone kind of a little bit off topic but it does kind of relate to this week's update because obviously e3 is around the corner we know that fortnite aren't probably going to do any events but regarding leaked files i guess we'll see two changes possibly to the eye over the next few weeks and probably tomorrow the eye will reveal its face a little bit like we saw with the fort bite thing over here we'll probably get more revealed of this maybe greasy grove will see a few extra melts to it maybe not though i'm not too sure if that is going to take place or not i feel like because so many events or fake events are happening on t youtube as live streams i feel like fortnite are thinking hold on guys let's just leave greasy grove because these guys are clip baiting it too much let's just leave it how it is and let's just do polar peak itself and then deal with greasy grove another time and what would make perfect sense you've got to consider guys it's, it's summer now obviously in the majority of the world i said this in my previous video the australians are unlucky for you guys it's winter over there but it's summer in the US and the UK and many other places as well. So that means that this location, Polar Peak, could melt and bring out a huge wave or a huge monster which sends huge tons of ice or water into Greasy which causes it to melt. And I think that would work perfect and this part of the map would completely change ready for season nine and it, or season 10, sorry. And it could be a massive cinematic rather than an actual in-game event. We'd have to just see how well Fortnite could program stuff. Another good uh, theory which has been going around is that the monster's gonna have several legs and arms arms which could pop out through the ice you have to damage them which i think would be really cool over time so like long-term events that maybe last a few days three four five six days or so a little bit like we had the rune which flew 
all the way from that side over by Paradise Palms, where I'm looking right now, uh, by Lucky Landing, by that little bridge over there. And it went all the way this way through Fatal Fields, all the way around over here, round past Salty. And then it stopped at Salty for a very long time. They kind of delayed it and made it last a few extra days because they realized the community were just absolutely smashing it and it was just going so quick. So they stopped it. At, at, I always call it Salty, but it's not. They stopped it over by this location here, which I completely just lost the name for, Shifty Shafts. It always happens. Shifty Shafts, Salty Springs, and Snobby Shores. I always get them free mixed up. It's because they're the S's, and they just confuse me sometimes. But yes, they stopped at Shifty, moved through uh, Shifty, went to Tilted, and then obviously trolled us with the insurance bill. And if you guys remember, the biggest troll ever in Fortnite was when the rune went to here. Everyone thought it was going to go through the building, but nope, epic trollers. It went over and went straight over to Loot Lake, which I think was just hilarious and probably one of the funniest moments ever we've had in Fortnite. And then eventually it did go inside Loot Lake. And that was probably the best route. Like the other ones went too quick. Just way too quick. And the weird one with the lights, which just wasn't working. It was completely broken. We had the one on the hill, which just was too confusing. It ended in like five or six seconds. And the other two, I just can't even remember where they even came from. They just appeared and just... They had the DJ one, the dance one you had to dance at. And then the fifth one. I actually don't know how that got there, the fifth one. I can't remember it. Like there were so many just going on randomly. And the what the first one was the best, and then all the rest were just quick ones and they just got done and dusted with in no time. So hopefully with the event this time we get some more interactive things. We had a lot of interactive stuff last season. We had a total of five runes which you had to interact with. We also had a total of three different dig sites. So we can probably expect leaks to them interactions or then mini events tomorrow. We'll probably get some leaks regarding things that are gonna melt, things that we have to hit, file sounds and stuff like that, regarding that sort of stuff. But regarding the actual final event, I don't think that'll be the case because we are only heading in to week four tomorrow, or week five tomorrow, isn't it, I guess? Or week, I think it is week five tomorrow. It technically should be. So unless them challenges have been leaked early, I'm a little bit behind on my Fortnite challenges. Should be week five tomorrow, which I'm. it is going to be week five on the Thursday. So get week five and week six leaks. Then obviously another update for week seven or leading in from week six to week seven. Usually that's where it is, just in that in-between gap. That'll be where we start to get big event leaks. I think tomorrow there isn't going to be that many leaks. But yes, there will be some map changes and stuff and some storyline content to produce. So we expect that on the channel for you guys. I can't wait to go over exactly what is going on in the Fortnite map. I can't wait to show you guys the map changes. Hopefully we get some more storyline from the rock people over there. And the block will be changed as well. I'm really excited to see what the new two blocks are. Because the blocks are always an awesome tour. I know a lot of you guys enjoy that. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you're new around here, stick around for daily Fortnite content. Thank you everyone who's been supporting me recently. We are so close from 400 and subscribers let's try and hit that as fast as possible much love and respect to everyone supporting the channel if you want to get involved with me and communicate with me personally join my discord it's the best way to stay in contact with me and also tweet me on twitter that is a kind of a dead space where hardly anyone tweets me at the minute so feel free to tweet me and i'll get back to you if you've got any questions or anything interactive that you want to just talk about we've got a storyline and stuff like that it's a great place to contact me and same with my discord my discord is probably the most one I can I don't know they're kind of on par because I don't get many tweets whereas on Discord I get a lot of messages so Twitter guys get over there if you've got it it's an easy way of contacting me. I hope you guys have enjoyed and once again this is Postbox Pat signing out.